So, uh, I have few cases to be discussed regarding acid-based disorders. The first case it states that a 7-year-old boy was admitted unconscious to the Kizwati department. On examination, he was found to be hyperventilating. So, uh, he had consumed inadvertently ethylene glycol antifreeze which was present in his home and his blood results showed that there was a normal sodium and sodium level potassium level was increased bicarbonate was drastically decreased chloride level is slightly decreased and glucose is was in a normal level arterial blood gas analysis shows that ph was very low it is it was 7.2 pco2 was also low and po2 was normal so in uh, approaching a patient with acid based disturbances i have already talked in my previous slide the first thing you will look for is you look for the ph of the patient the second thing is the bicarbonate level the third thing we will look for is the paco2 level the fourth thing you will look for is the anion gap and the fifth thing you will look is for the underlying cause for the acid based disorder so in this case the ph was 7.2 bicarbonate is 10 millimole PaCO2 is 3.18 and anion gap we will be calculating it as uh, sodium plus potassium uh, minus uh, bicarbonate plus your chloride. So if we, cal we calculate the anion gap that is sodium plus potassium minus bicarbonate plus chloride, we will get the anion gap which is very high that is 37 millimole per liter. So the anion gap is normal one is 10 to 12 millimole per liter and uh, as I have already discussed the one of the cause for your high anion gap uh, acidosis is ethylene glycol poisoning. So here because of the ethylene glycol there is more amount of your anions to be accumulated and there is a decrease in the pH and PaCO2 is also decreased where it is trying to compensate so it is partly compensated since the pH has not come to normal if it has that if it would have been that the bicarbonate level was also in the trend of increasing the pH would have come to normal and this phase would have been compensated similarly uh, we can uh, the diagnosis for this case is there is a high anion gap metabolic acidosis anion gap is 37 millimole per liter there is hyperkalemia and uh, hyperkalemia is mainly because we have decrease in the uh, pH so I have told that your H plus K plus exchanger is there where H plus if it is in the high amount in the plasma gets inside the cell and the potassium which is present intracellularly comes outside which leads to hyperkalemia so remember one thing that acidosis is always associated with hyperkalemia and alkalosis is always associated with hypokalemia now the second cause uh, sorry second case here we see that a 67 year old retired printer he was brought to the hospital to the casualty for increasing breathlessness he was a chronic smoker and uh, it was it was found to be centrally cyanosed and there was copious uh, coughing copious green stain so his arterial blood results showed that uh, ph was 7.31 slightly reduced pso2 is was very high and PO2 was also reduced, that is oxygen saturation was reduced and bicarbonate level is getting, is uh, at a higher, uh, higher range. So here if you see the, the first thing was to look for pH and then was for bicarbonate, then was for PSCO2, then for the anion gap and then the cause. Here you can see pH is uh, slightly decreased, bicarbonate level is in the increasing trend, PSCO2 is very high and anion gap is if we measure it comes uh, might be it might be normal since we don't have the blood picture for this other electrolyte and the cause is the generally specifically it has been uh, the patient has come for breathlessness and since he has increased in your pco2 it is mainly because of your respiratory acidosis and the composition is taking place by reabsorption, reabsorbing more and more bicarbonate or more and more bicarbonate is there in the body and more H plus being excreted uh, where the compensation is happening uh, in the part, uh, partly that is it has not been fully compensated. So it is a cause of respiratory acidosis probably because of acute exacerbation of COPD. There is hypercapnia. We can see that PCO2 was drastically raised there is hypoxia. Hypoxia previously and uh, uh, the oxygen theory, since the partial pressure, the oxygen, partial pressure of oxygen was uh, very much reduced and cyanosis mainly because there was hypoxia. 
So this is a case of respiratory acidosis partly compensated by increasing increased bicarbonate level but not uh, norm, uh, fully compensated since the pH has not come to the normal level. Now the third case, a baby girl uh, a few days uh, old had projectile vomiting since birth due to py pyloric stenosis and her blood results depicted that there was a normal level of uh, sodium, potassium level was slightly decreased, bicarbonate level is high, chloride level is also decreased. <clears throat> Our ABG shows that pH is 7.52 that is it is raised, it is in the case of alkalosis. PaCO2 is in the increasing trend and PaO2 is uh, also within the normal range. If you see here, the pH is uh, uh, increased, it is, uh, it is indicating towards alkalosis. Bicarbonate level is also at the higher rate, higher uh, level. PaCO2 is seen to be increasing. And then when we measure the anion gap, the anion gap comes out to be, uh, it's 137 plus 3 minus, uh, 40 plus ATP. So it's uh, 140 min minus, is it incorrect? It's divided. Okay. So there is the anion gap is also raised, and uh, uh, the fourth, the fifth uh, thing to be kept in mind is the cause. The cause can for the uh, metabolic alkalosis is there is uh, the pyloric stenosis, there is projectile vomiting, more amount of exhale being lost by vomit causing the scenario of alkalosis. So here you can see there metabolic alkalosis is there which is mainly because of severe vomiting. There is low plasma chloride concentration because of loss of proton as well as HCl in the vomit. Hypokalemia, since H plus is being less in the plasma, so H plus is, uh, uh, is coming uh, interest from the cells to the uh, extracellular space and the potassium which was present outside is going inside leading to hypokalemia. This is, this is mainly to combat acid-base imbalance. So I told you alkalosis is always associated with hypokalemia and vice versa in case of acidosis. So compensation, is, so the compensation here is by uh, hypoventilation that is by retention of PCO2 and as we saw the PCO2 level is uh, at the increasing trend. So this is the cause of metabolic alkalosis where the compensation is done by the respiratory system but not fully compensated. Coming on to the fourth case, a 20 year old woman uh, presented to casualty with a panic attack and she had noticed perioral paresthesia and was found on uh, examination to be hyperventilating. So what her arterial blood gas showed that pH was high, your PCO2 was very less and PO2 was within the normal range and bicarbonate level was also reduced. So here pH is increased means there is the, this is the case of alkalosis and uh, PCO2 is uh, in the decreasing trend that is because of the hyperventilation since she is hyperventilating there is decrease in PCO2. Our body has uh, the, the patient has been compensated by increased amount of the bicarbonate excretion that is the reabsorption is reduced there is more amount of excretion so bicarbonate is in the decreasing trend so this might be the case of respiratory alkalosis and the uh, important thing here is perioral paresthesia this is mainly because of alkalosis causing decrease in your um, ionized calcium which can cause tetany like symptom or perioral paresthesia so here Respiratory alkalosis, mainly, uh, which is uh, given in the history by panic attack causing hyperventilation which causes more and more washing off of CO2 leading to decrease in the proton accumulation and increase in the pH causing alkalosis, perioral paresthesia because of the lower amount of the ionized calcium due to the change in the pH. And composition is by the kidney which is causing increased amount of the bicarbonate excretion and decreased uh, reabsorption. Now the last case for today's class is during resuscitation of a 60 year old man from a cardiorespiratory arrest, the blood gas analysis revealed that pH was 7, which is very less, pCO2 was 7.5 kilopascal, uh, which is getting higher, bicarbonate is very less and lactate concentration was very high and PO2 was uh, um, done was 12.1 after giving 48% of the oxygen. So this patient, uh, he shows a, 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 a picture of mixed type of the disorder where there is respiratory acidosis as well as metabolic acidosis. Respiratory acidosis because there is uh, caused by lack of ventilation and metabolic acidosis which is caused by the hypoxia which causes um, that 
which was there the hypoxia was causing more and more amount of your pco2 and since after po2 is started it has come into normal but pa2 is uh, pco2 is still high and there is accumulation of lactic acid so lactic acid causes more amount of your uh, ionized uh, unmeasured cations to be accumulated causing lactic acidosis and that leads to this is the condition where there is res metab respiratory acidosis with metabolic acidosis this is a type of the um, mixed disorder and here uh, the same thing that is uh, which i have already told ph uh, bicarbonate pco2 anion gap and cause these five things are the major thing which we have to look for in every case of acid base disturbances after so uh, this was the last slide for today's class there is a saying by uh, scientist H. L. Mencken who told that life is a struggle not against sin, not against the money, power, malicious animal magnetism, but against the hydrogen ions. So we are struggling every day, every moment with the hydrogen ions to excrete as much as possible and reabsorb bicarbonate to maintain the body pH to 7.35 to 7.45. Thank you.